Hey everybody, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at recreating our custom Lumos effect from the Harry Potter movies. I thought this was a good time to do it, seeing as it's close to Halloween, and in a matter of a couple weeks, the newest Harry Potter movie will come out. Thought it'd be a good time to demonstrate this technique. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I have here is just some footage of my daughter twirling around a little wand I made, which is nothing more than a stick with a battery on the end wrapped in some green tape with a little LED on the end so that you will have a little bit of light cast on her body when she moves this around for a little added realism and also it makes the wand tip a whole lot easier to track. So let's go ahead and track the tip. I'm going to create first a new null object and I'm going to rename this null wand tip. Okay. Next I'm going to select the layer and hit track motion and if we give ourselves a little more room here in the window that opens up I want to take this track point put it right on the middle of our wand tip expand our search area out just a little bit and then hit analyze forward now we'll, while this analyzes um, I'm going to explain a little bit of what we're doing. We're going to create a custom glow effect on the wand tip and then to add a little more realism we're going to add our own custom chroma ring so that it expands out and gives a little more life and movement to our Lumos effect. And I think this is exactly what the uh, special effects artists in the Harry Potter's movies did to make this a little more interesting effect than just a simple glow at the end of the wand tip. Well now our wand track is done. Let's hit uh, edit target to make sure we've got our wand tip null selected and we do. Hit apply in the X and Y direction and if we close out of our tracking window here you can see that our null layer has indeed uh, been parented or basically tracked to the tip of our wand which is exactly what we want. Alright, the next thing I want to do is probably color correct this footage a little bit. Um, I'm going to use a three-way color corrector from Red Giant called Colorista Effect uh, Magic Bullet Colorista and this is just easier for me to use. You can use some of the built-in effects like color correction curves or CC toner, tint, any wide variety of these and in CS5 you also have another three-way color corrector Synthetic Aperture Color Finesse 3 which does much the same thing and I'll show you that in a second uh, but for if you have Colorista it just makes life a whole lot easier it's a great plug-in I'm going to drag the shadows down into the kind of bluish teal color here I'm also going to do the same thing to the mid-tones drag those down to get that kind of um, it's almost a monotone look, but it's still got a little bit of flesh tones in it if you look at the movies. And if you want to pump the flesh tones up just a little bit, you can push the highlights over into the orangish color to warm them up a bit. And you can probably bring the primary exposure down just to darken the scene up a hair. Okay, so that's how you would use Colorista. If you have CS5 and you have the synthetic aperture plug-in, we can do pretty much the same thing. Let's go ahead and grab that and this one comes uh, with After Effects. Twirl it down and you can see it's very similar. It's got your color wheels here where you can pull the shadows down into the teal just like we did with Colorista. The midtones down and push the highlights up a little bit and you can make a master adjustment if you wanted to. You want everything to go teal or one color so you can do whatever you need to do to get that color looking the way you want it to and you can adjust the curves here to give you a little more contrast and as you can see it does a pretty good job of replicating what Colorista does I just happen to like Colorista a little bit better which is why I use it and we can toggle these off and on you can see not a whole lot of difference between the two but for this I'll stick with Colorista but I'll leave the color finesse on here so if you have CS5 um, and you want to open this project file, you can just simply turn that on or toggle it on and you're ready to go. Okay, so we've got our color correction done. Let's go ahead and build our glow on the tip of our wand. And to do this, I'm going to create a new solid layer. I'm going to make this solid layer uh, 900 by 900. And we're going to call this glow. Choose OK. And to this layer, I'm going to add effect generate lens flare. Now it seems kind of strange at first, but stick with me. 
Let's go ahead and put our lens flare right in the middle of our layer here. So 450, 450 on a 900 by 900 layer. And if we zoom in here, you can see that what we've basically done is created a bunch of concentric circles. Now I'm going to change the lens type from the 50 to 300 millimeter zoom to the 105 millimeter prime, which I think gives us some colors which are more uh, in line with the tealish color we have in our scene, but we still get some nice color variation from the bright whites in the middle to the blues and reds, yellows, and going on out. And I think that looks nice. Uh, it's a little too sharp though, and we want to blur this out to give us a nice diffuse look. So what I'm going to do is apply Effect, Blur and Sharpen, CC Radial Blur to our layer. And if we zoom in here and increase the amount, you can see that what we're doing is just kind of blurring out the rings here to make them look a little more put together or soft. I'm also going to tape the type, change the type from scratch to fading zoom, which just changes things a little bit and smooths them out even a little bit more. And another thing I like about using this uh, flare instead of just a simple glow on perhaps like a circle layer or something like that, is you get these nice streaks which I think adds a lot to the character of this effect. I also want to add a circular mask to this so I can feather the edges out and not have any problems with sharp lines here uh, at the end if this isn't totally black over here on the side. So let's grab the elliptical mask tool and double click it and what we've done is create a circular mask on this layer. We can solo this out and you can see we've got this kind of fading out here to the side. What I want to do is twirl down the mask parameters here. I'm going to bring the expansion in quite a bit and then feather that mask out. And It's important that we don't get any uh, white or lighter areas here at the side because it'll ruin uh, the look and you'll get a nice big line through your footage which we don't want. Okay, let's change the transfer mode from normal to screen and now what we can do is hit S to reveal the scale of this layer and just scale it down to fit into the scale of our scene. Now that we have it uh, kind of scaled down where we want it, we can position this over top our little wand tip here zoom in and get this right in the center of our null object and we can parent this layer to the wand tip null. We zoom out here and scrub through the timeline you can see that this tracks right along with our wand tip exactly what we want to do. Okay, now we need to add a little more pizzazz to this composition and the way we're going to do that is by adding a chroma ring to this which kind of expands out and this is one of the things they did in the Potter movies which I thought really made this uh, effect look a little more interesting. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We're going to build that entirely inside of After Effects with no third-party plugins. Let's create a new composition and call this one Chroma Ring. We're going to change the width to 1000 and the height to 500. Make sure it's black and click OK. Now inside of this composition, the first thing we want to do is create some fractal noise and these kind of long lines going up and down vertically. So let's create a new solid layer and call this fractal. Make it comp size and then choose effect, noise and grain, turbulent noise. Now all the basic settings are fine. The only thing I'm going to change is the transform here. Turn down the scale, turn off uniform scaling, and to get that kind of a long look, I'm going to turn the scale width from 100 down to 10 to really make it thin here up and down. And then I'm going to scale the height up all the way to 600 to make those even longer. And if you want to, you can bump up the contrast to make it a little more black and white up to maybe about 120. I also want to add a little bit of a mask to this to soften out the top and bottom edges. So let's grab the rectangle tool and let's just draw a rectangular mask through the center of this and then hit F to reveal the feather properties of that mask and feather that out. And if we zoom in here you can see that it did a pretty good job of feathering out to black here um, and I think that'll work nicely. Okay, now we need to create our actual chroma ring element. So let's create a new solid layer and I'm going to make this a width of 1000 which is the width of a comp. I'm going to turn the height down to about 70 and you can play with this number that's going to be the width of our ring and we'll just call this chroma layer 
and click OK. Now to this layer we want to add Effect Generate Ramp. And the reason why we're adding a ramp is we want to make this kind of a, re a rainbow look going from red all the way through blue. Uh, unfortunately, After Effects doesn't have a really good way to make multicolored ramps or gradients. And so this is a little tip or trick I'm going to show you to expand the built-in capabilities of After Effects using just a couple of the effects. I'm going to actually reverse the start color and end color. And instead of moving those points around, it's just easier to do this. So black is at the bottom and white is at the top. Now to this layer, I'm going to add Effect Color Correction Colorama. And what we've basically done is remap the black to red and the white all the way through the color wheel on this output cycle. So black is up here, mid gray is this blue color right in the middle, and then as you go to white it goes back up to this red. Now obviously I don't want the red ending here, so let me just pull this purple out. And I'm going to move this blue all the way up to the top here so we have it just on the left side of the red. And you can see we get a nice sharp line there and the blue is at the very end here. Now I also want to rearrange these colors a little bit to spread them out over the color wheel since we got rid of a couple of the colors. And I want a little more red here at the front. There, I think that will do nicely. And I also want to turn off the uh, modify alpha parameter here because I don't want that to uh, mess with us because what we're going to do next is come in here and create another mask on top of this layer right down the middle and once again we're going to feather this mask out to give us a nice soft edge on either side of our chroma ring so we can just zoom in here and that's a little much and the reason why we turned off the modify alpha is I'll show you what happens if it's on. If you have Modify Alpha on, you don't get the ability to use the mask to soften the edges. So you got to turn that off and then you can soften everything up. And right now you can go ahead and create any more keys or points if you want a little more red here at the front uh, or blues or whatever else to really make this color wheel uh, or this rainbow effect the way you want it. I think that looks good. The next thing we want to do is animate this uh, chroma layer over time, dropping through our composition. So let's hit P to reveal the position of the fractal, and then just scrub it up, whoop, not the fractal, the chroma layer. And we're going to scrub it up to the top here so it's off of our comp layer. We'll left click the stopwatch to set a keyframe and move down here to about four seconds and then just scrub it in the Y so it goes off screen again. Now we want this to loop over and over and over again so let's alt click the position and we're going to add the loop out expression here which will basically just take the keyframes that we've already made and continuously loop them over and over and over again for as long as our composition. Really handy. The final thing we want to do is pull the chroma layer down below the fractal and change the track mat from no track mat to luma mat of the fractal. So now if we zoom in here, up here at the top, you'll be able to see it kind of fades in, scrubs down through our layer, and then fades out, which is exactly what we want. Okay, let's hop back over to our main composition here. I'm going to drop the chroma ring uh, composition right in on top and let's move it to about two so it's right in the middle and what we want to do is to remap this from a rectangle to a circle so to do that we've got a handy built-in effect here effect distort polar coordinates now we want to change the type of conversion from polar to rectangular to rectangular to polar and if we increase the interpolation you can see we've remapped this to a pure circle and if we scrub through the timeline it kind of starts at the middle and then fades out to the edges, which is exactly what we want. All right, might be a little bit big, so you know, scale it to fit your taste. I'll scale it down to about 60 here. And now what we can do is take this layer and move it over just like we did with the wand tip glow, line it up with the edge of our null object and simply link this by parenting it to the wand tip. So now when we scrub through the timeline, you can see it stays right on the wand tip, which is exactly what we want. 
The final thing I want to do is color correct the, the chroma ring here because it's a little overly bright and it's got a little too much color in it for the monochromatic look we have in our scene. So let's go ahead and select the layer and choose Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And what this does is remap all the luminance values to black and white. But I'm going to change the map the black to kind of this uh, dark teal color to match the darks in our scene. And I'm also going to change the map white to a lighter teal color to make it all monochromatic, maybe desaturated just a bit. So now it's like a black and white and it fits into our scene, but uh, we want to bring back a little bit of the color because that's why we did it. So just turn the tint amount down until you're happy with the amount of color that you have. Think about uh, 65 looks good for me. And as you can see, it reads like it's still multicolored. However, it fits much better into our scene. I also think it's a little overly uh, transparent or opaque here. So we can hit T on the a keyboard and bring down the opacity of it to about 60% or maybe even 50%. I want this to be there, but I don't want it to be so overly obvious uh, that it really distracts from everything else in the scene. So at 40% I think that looks nice and if we scrub through the timeline you can see we get that nice pulsing effect um, and it continuously goes because we have that loop out applied to our chroma ring. Now one other thing if you want to adjust the size of your ring and you think it gets or it's a little too small, all you got to do is go back to this composition. And instead of monkeying with the layer size and all the rest of those parameters, you can simply hit scale or S on the chroma layer, unlink the scale, and just scale the entire thing up in Y and everything will scale along with it. So if we scale this up to 150%, we'll make the layer wider in this comp, which will conversely make the chroma hoop or ring wider in your final composition. Well, that's it. I mean, it didn't take too long, and we have a custom Lumos spell effect for your next Harry Potter fan film or major wizard blockbuster production. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section here at creativecow.net. And if you have any questions that you want me to answer relatively quickly, go over to the trap code forum on creativecow.net, which I host, and you can leave me a question there, even if it's not trap code related, and I'll be sure to try to answer that as quickly and as succinctly as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Michael Park for creativecow.net.